Do you know the most terrifying thing about humanity? No. It's not the fact that they were born from a Class 12 death world. They still be monsters in your eyes, even if they grew up in the softest of garden worlds. Their home simply hardened them. Prepared them for us. No, it's not that they drink reactor cooling for fun. Or that their idea of a good meal requires literal bioweapons and fertilizer in order to make it flavorful. Capsation. Sodium chloride. They even need potassium in their diets. But as curious as that is, it's hardly something to fear, as long as the more delicate of you avoid sampling their cuisine. No. It's not that they still have yet to unite their home world's many governments. Yes, many. It's the first thing every spacefaring race does before they even leave their gravity well, and they couldn't even do that normally. No. Humans have something worse. Something that could easily destroy all that you know, if they so much as wished it. Human beings will bond with anything. Yes, anything. Their crew members, their superiors, their sworn mortal enemies, I've seen it all. By the five hells. Lock eyes with the right human, and they'd probably die for you if it came to it. Even stranger, their bonding ability does not strictly apply to other intelligent beings. The stories of a human bonding with their ship, with their non-intelligent pet, with the weapon they carried into battle, all true. Still don't believe me? I once watched a human run into direct gunfire just to save a mindless janitorial drone. Not because it was expensive, not because it was shaped in a mildly humanoid fashion. No, the human named it, and that was enough. That is why, with overwhelming support of the Ketrashian Holy Empire and all associated races, I will have to reject the Council's proposal for war. Furthermore, we hereby announce a pending treaty of mutual defence with the Terran Confederation. A treaty that holds no exception for Council races, including the Council Defence Force. As per galactic law, we are also not obligated to provide aid for a war of aggression we have voted against. Therefore, we will hereby begin the withdrawal of all Ketranian forces and financial support from the CDF, should you agree to commit to this pointless war. Human beings will bond with anything, and as their closest neighbours, we were certainly no exception. I yield the remainder of my time. You know, we didn't ask you to go that far. Ambassador Anderson sighed, her face illuminated by the holographic figure of yours truly. A figure I wasted little time in clearing away once the recording had stopped. I was never going to get used to watching myself speak. You know you wouldn't have lasted a week against the CDF fleet otherwise, I countered, once I had finished, knowing fully by now that she was just complaining to complain. It was another one of those human things she kept talking about. Honestly, a human that wasn't grumbling about something was somehow scarier. And yet somehow we'll fare better dying together? She continued, rowing the size of her head with her fingers in an expression I actually did fear, even considering the size of your fleets. They'd never actually commit to war without us. I nearly chuffed, brushing over her insult as best as I could. Especially not against us, even if they could win, the victory would be too costly. A Pyrrhic victory? Well, at least that distracted her from her anger. The fur on the back of my neck standing on end, the instant her eyes locked onto me, how human of you. We learned long ago to trust your insights when it comes to war. Really, it was the exact way they had ended the Silvar Skirmish, or what they called the First Contact War. The concept of area denial minefields and hit-and-run guerrilla tactics on our supply lines bleeding our technologically superior fleets dry before they could ever reach their homeworld. And that said nothing of the war on the ground. You know I can't sign this treaty. Anna said eventually sighed again. Thankfully not commenting on the fact that I'd averted my eyes first. Even with the support of Congress, half the Federation is ready to riot over you going down with us. What about the other half? The 2nd and 7th fleets are already moving to shore up your hyperlane choke points. I've been permitted to offer you an honorary seat on the Confederation War Committee. You tell me what the other half is thinking. That the Huntress is twice as deadly with the pack at her side? That was rhetorical, she groaned, rubbing at her temples for the umpteenth time of the day. I should have retired years ago. We both knew she was just being dramatic. She absolutely lived for her job. Goddess, she was probably the only reason it had taken this long for the Council to finally come to vote on this war. Her ability to take an argument and make it into a diplomatic nightmare a little too intimidating. Just sign the treaty, I stated as firmly as I dare. It means nothing to my kind but legality of which the Council will wish to argue, but even without its ratification we still come to your defence. But why? Tossing aside all pretext or formality, Anderson barely gave me a chance to yelp before she was suddenly standing in front of me. 
a tiny frame barely reaching the centre of my chest, though that spared me little from the power of her glare. There is no reason for your people to die for my kind. I believe you were the one who said, till death to us part. What? She recoiled, her face flushing with a colour I'd grown to love. That isn't... We're not talking about us. Yet there are millions of our kind committed to the exact same partnerships, I purred. My lips pulling up into a grin, they were never truly meant to emulate. Our races have become so entwined, you may well as be Keteranian for all intents and purposes. The only reason it is mutual defence and not full integration into the Empire is because of your government's staunch refusal to be integrated in the first place. You lost the war, she sighed yet again, her anger evaporating in an instant. That just meant she was slightly more receptive to a hug I couldn't stop my arms from initiating. You know, they're already talking about this being a ploy we came up with. They're calling us biased on the evening news. They've been arguing that ever since the wedding. I didn't have to hear her muffled laugh. I could feel it. Her face burying itself into the soft fur of my stomach, just like it always eventually did. Remember when we announced the trade agreement? Mm-hmm. I nodded. Even her muffled speech understandable by now. The lawsuits were entertaining. That's not what you said during... Yet I'm sure I'll come to view this fiasco the same way. Sleeping my arms carefully around her, I didn't give my wife a chance to complain before I had her up and off her feet. Bring her to a much more acceptable eye level, which was a rarity I'd come to enjoy as of late. Please sign the treaty, Sarah. I really don't want to ask your president myself. You're still afraid of her? I'd rather face the combined might of the CDF. I shuddered, only yet another laugh for my love. Your matriarch is... a fearsome huntress. You know we're going back for Christmas, right? Why do you think I'm asking for mutual defence? 